there was a huge learning curve for the for the um, medical services in 1914 and early 1915, um, and Kate must have been part of that learning curve. And the fact that she managed to serve most of the war um, certainly seems to me, and, and the, the um, accolades she got towards the end of the war for her service suggests to me that she must have been very much um, part of a. A develop, the development of professional services uh, um, for nursing and uh, casualty support in that period. As formidable in her retirement as she had been in her working life, Kate's frequent visits back to County Durham are fondly remembered by her great nieces, Maureen and Elizabeth. She had one of those hearing aids that whistled a lot and you had the, the actual receiver strapped to your belt and a horrible thing in the area, I mean, it was really quite huge. And um, she still, still couldn't hear. If I spoke to her, she said, oh, I can hear you, because of course we have this problem with our voices, don't we, Maureen? Um, and that, that wasn't a problem, but the, at one point, she flung it, <laughs> flung it, I remember, in the kitchen down in Victoria. <laughs> and Auntie Margaret rigged her up a, a plastic tube with a full. <laughs> we used, I mean, Really, just a bit. and she giggled, you know. But we used to talk to her down this tube for a little while till she calmed down. I said, "What? What can I remember about Auntie Kate?" And I can just imagine sitting in the sea, oh, knitting socks, knitting socks. She was very good at knitting socks. Oh, when she socks. came up to when you, she came, yeah. When she, mm. when she came to mm. her for the, for the only for the afternoon or the hours she came, the sat and knitting it, and she would say, um, uh, "Get me an ashtray, my dear." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Get me an ashtray. Yeah, yeah, she bring, sort of looked down bring, her nose when she bring, talked, bring, didn't she? Bring me an ashtray, my dear. The people of Tudor and Spenny Moor who lived through the Great War all have individual stories to tell. Those represented here concentrate on the evolving medical services of the time and are a fraction of the thousands from the area who served both abroad and at home between 1914 and 1919. Necessity is often said to be the mother of invention. The crucible of conflict that was the Western Front surely demonstrates this. The strides in medicine and casualty clearing that were made during the First World War are reflected in the military medical provisions that are used today. Speed is of the essence in trauma care and the medical emergency response team take the patient back to the Royal 3 Hospital on the back of a helicopter as soon as possible. There's always a risk. Sometimes you'll find out that the troops are still in contact and of course you worry that there's going to be rounds sort of landing at your feet as well. The standard of care I think is second to none. It's, it's amazing to be part of that. Is pretty unique, pretty special experience. You get to be there for that person in that one hour of need where they need you more than they need anything else in their life. And you get to be the person that does that. I think if you don't feel in this job, then you shouldn't be doing the job. You have to separate it, don't get me wrong. You have to, there's at times where you just have to switch off and go, no, this is work. But there's other times where if you don't feel, then don't do this job. Go home, go do something else. The service of Kate Maxey and the thousands of others who tended the wounded of all sides is a remarkable legacy of an extraordinary time. <laughs>